And he will raise you up on eagle's wings, bear you on the breath of dawn, make you to shine like the sun, and hold you in the palm of his hand. People of God, happy Jubilee Sunday. Welcome, everybody. We're so excited to welcome all of you to our celebration today that we get to have just one day out of the year. So um, welcome, a special welcome to those of you who are guests in Nativity of Our Lady or even guests that are um, at the Catholic Church for the first time. This is probably the most unusual Catholic Church you'll ever go to if you are a guest. But just to kind of put things into context for you, whenever you come to a Catholic Mass in any church anywhere, whether it's a funeral or a wedding or, or a Sunday celebration, you're really being fed from two tables, the table of the Word or the Ambo and the table of the Eucharist or the altar. The first part of our Mass is where the Word of God is proclaimed to us. We believe it's inspired. We believe that we are nourished by that Word. And then bread and wine are brought to the altar table. And through the words of institution and through the power of the Holy Spirit, they are transformed for us into the body and blood of Jesus. So when it comes time for communion, if you're Catholic, if you receive communion in your parish, we invite you to do so today. If you're a guest in the Catholic Church, or maybe for whatever reason you're not prepared to receive today, then when it comes time for communion, we're going to invite you to come to the Eucharistic minister and cross your arms in front of you like this, and that's a sign for us to bless you on the forehead in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and for you to respond to that blessing by saying amen. Um, if you are someone who is out there in the, the congregation and needs communion brought to you, could you raise your hand for me right now and let me just get a sign. Some of, some of you are up here up front and we'll bring communion to you directly, but there's a few people here that need communion brought to them and it looks like this lady here and maybe a couple over here and then someone there in the back. Good. Now, here's another question for you. If you came in today and you didn't get a prayer card where you wrote your name on a card and you were given another card, or rather you will be given another card later, do you, um, is there anybody that didn't do that, that didn't fill out a card? Um, this lady right here. Raise your hand nice and tall because they're going to bring one to you right now. It's essential if you want to go to heaven to make sure you have a prayer card. <laughs> If you could silence your phones, everybody, um, that would be really helpful right now so we can be here uninterruptedly for this, um, this great day. You know, it's interesting. Um, when I was just a little baby, my parents gave me this, um, it was kind of like a stroller. I, I don't know if they still make these. Um, maybe they've decided that it stunts your creative development, but um, it was like a little... Um, sort of a rolling, sort of a, 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 a stroller, and you put the baby in it, and their legs would go through and touch the ground. And it was on wheels, and the idea was that the child would use their legs to go forward. Have you seen those before? <laughs> well, well, on the home movies, when I was in it as a baby, I just kept going backward. <laughs> I don't know. I think probably even as a baby, I thought it's much easier to go backward than it is to go forward. There is something about that whole process, right? That whole process of, um, of going backward in life. You know, we, we have to learn how to do that when we drive a car. You can't really learn to drive a car and go forward unless you can also learn to go backward, you know? Or um, you go to the supermarket and you're making your way down the aisle and all of a sudden you realize... You got to a certain point and you forgot something and now you're going to have to go back. There can be an inclination, it seems to me, to go backward in life. And you know what they say about life is that um, life is, um, it's, it's like a river. And like, um, like a river, life has a current and a movement to it. And then we get into that river in the way that we live our lives. And um, there can be a hesitation for us to really go forward, you know, 
go forward. We find that we actually maybe want to go backward sometimes for one reason or another. For instance, the pandemic. The pandemic happens. Everything changes in the, in the world. It, it becomes a, a totally different environment. And people keep saying, we just need to get back to normal. We just need to get back to normal. Only the problem is we'll probably never get back to where it was before the pandemic. There'll be a new normal. There's all kinds of politicians that are telling us they're going to take us back to the good old days, right? Just vote for them and they're going to get you back to the way things were when your grandmother and your grandfather were alive. Everything was better. Everything was better. And we want to go back there, right? Only the river keeps moving us forward. Even in our church, we find that oftentimes there are bishops or priests that want to take us back, you know? They want us to go back to 1953 because, oh, it was so perfect. Everything was so perfect and so orderly and so, so organized. And now it's just a big mess. Let's just go back. But you can never go back. Jesus, when he was traveling around, he went from town to village. And the people there would say, stay with us, stay with us. And he said, no, I have to, I have to go forward. I have to go forward to the next town and the next village. Because that's how it is with God. God is always wanting to take us forward. And if we can stop trying to go backward and we can let the river take us forward, a lot of the stress in life dissipates. Everything gets better because God's going to take you down that river right where you're meant to be. Amen? Amen. So because we all come from different places, because we don't want anyone to be a stranger, I want you to stand up, look to the right and left of you, front and behind you, see if there's someone you don't know, and introduce yourself, and welcome them to Jubilee 2022. says the Lord, say to those whose hearts are full of fear, be strong, fear not, for I am here, I am here. I will open the eyes of the blind, I will make the lame to leap, ears of the deaf will hear my word, the tongue will sing. surprises come stand in wonder at the mercy of the Lord come be amazed enter the kingdom of surprises come enter deep into the love of the My cup is full of refreshing living water. My bread is life for you, life that makes you whole. surprises come stand in wonder at the mercy of the Lord come be amazed enter the kingdom of surprises come enter deep into the love of the Lord open up your Fill your soul. 
surprises Come stand in wonder at the mercy of the Lord Come be amazed, enter the kingdom of surprises Come enter deep into the love gathered together on this incredibly humid but wonderful day in San Luis Obispo in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Light, grace, and peace be with you all. And with your spirit. Thank you. We call to mind on this day the many blessings of, of being a part of this community of faith. The insight that we glean, the community that we are part of, the many blessings that we have in living this amazing part of the world. And so we acknowledge God's great mercy in bringing us here into this moment in time. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. song of praise. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Jesus, Savior of all, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away our sins, O Lord. Let us pray. Impart to your servants, we pray, O Lord, the gift of heavenly grace, that the feast of the Nativity of the Blessed Virgin may bring deeper peace to those for whom the birth of her Son was the dawning of salvation. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated as we listen to the Word of God. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, go down at once to your people whom you brought out of the land of Egypt, for they have become depraved. They have soon turned aside from the way I pointed out to them, making for themselves a molten calf and worshiping it, sacrificing to it and crying out, this is your God, O Israel, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. I see how stiff-necked this people is, continued the Lord to Moses. Let me alone then, that my wrath may blaze up against them and consume them. Then I will make you a great nation. But Moses employed, implored the Lord, his God, saying, Why, O Lord, should your wrath blaze up against your own people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt, with such great power and with so strong a hand? Remember your servants, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, and how you swore to them by your own self, saying, I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky. And all this land that I promised, I will give your descendants as their perpetual heritage. So the Lord relented in his punishment that he had threatened to inflict on his people. The word of the Lord. shelter of the Lord who abide in his shadow for life say to the Lord my refuge my rock in whom I trust and he will raise you up on eagle's wings
against a stone, and he will raise you up on eagle's wings, bear you on lover and of dawn, make you to shine like the sun. reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, I am grateful to him who has strengthened me, Christ Jesus our Lord, because he considered me trustworthy in appointing me to the ministry. I was once a blasphemer and a persecutor and arrogant, but I have been mercifully treated because I acted out of ignorance in my unbelief. Indeed, the grace of our Lord has been abundant, along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. This saying is trustworthy and deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Of these, I am the foremost. But for that reason, I was mercifully treated, so that in me, as the foremost, Christ Jesus might display all his patience as an example for those who would come to believe in him for everlasting life. To the king of ages, incorruptible, invisible, the only God, honor and glory, forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Halle, 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 song we sing, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to listen to Jesus. But the Pharisees and the scribes began to complain, saying... This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. So to them, he addressed these parables. What man among you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, would not leave the 99 in the desert and go after the lost one 
until he finds it. My sheep, have you seen my sheep? My sheep, where is my sheep? Where is my sheep? <laughs> My sheep! And, and when he does find it, he sets it on his shoulders with great joy. And upon his arrival home, he calls together his friends and neighbors and says to them, Rejoice with me, because I have found my lost sheep. I tell you, in just the same way, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous people who have no need of repentance. Or what woman, having 10 coins and losing one, would not light a lamp and sweep the house, searching carefully until she finds it? Have you seen my coin? <laughs> Have you found it? Have you seen my coin? Anybody? Oh gosh, where is my coin? Have you seen my coin? Oh. <laughs> Have you seen my coin? Oh. <sighs> Have you seen my coin? Oh gosh, where is that coin? I've got to find that coin. Do you have my coin? Have you seen it? Have you seen my coin? Oh, there's my coin. <laughs> rejoice, I have found my coin. Help me to rejoice. <laughs> Love it. And when she does find it, she calls together her friends and neighbors and says to them, rejoice with me because I have found the coin that I lost. In just the same way, I tell you, there will be rejoicing among the angels of God over one sinner who repents. And then he said, a man had two sons, and the younger son said to his father, Father, give me the share of your estate that should come to me. So the father divided the property between them. <laughs> After a few days, the younger son collected all his belongings and set off to a distant country where he squandered his inheritance on a life of dissipation. When he had freely spent everything, a severe famine struck that country, and he found himself in dire need. So he hired himself out to one of the local citizens who sent him to his farm to tend the swine. And he longed to eat his fill of the pods on which the swine fed, but no one gave him any. Coming to his senses, he thought, how many of my father's hired workers have more than enough food to eat, but here am I, dying from hunger. I shall get up and go to my father, and I shall say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Treat me as you would treat one of your hired workers. So he got up. And he went to his father. And while he was still a long way off, his father caught sight of him. 
and he was filled with compassion. He ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. He said, his son said to his father, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you, and I no longer deserve to be called your son. But his father ordered his servants, quickly, bring the finest robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Take the fatted calf and slaughter it. And let us celebrate with a feast because this son of mine was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. And then the celebration began. Now, the older son had been out in the field and on his way back as he neared the house, he heard the sound of music and dancing. He called one of the servants and asked what this might mean. The servant said to him, your brother has returned and your father has sla slaughtered the fatted calf because he has come back safe and sound. He became angry and when he refused to enter the house, his father came out and pleaded with him. He said to his father in reply, look, all these years I served you and not once did I disobey your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat to feast on with my friends. But when your son returns, who swallowed up your property with prostitutes, for him you slaughter the fatted calf? He said to him, my son, you are here with me always. Everything I have is yours. But now we must celebrate and rejoice because your brother was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. The Gospel of the Lord. Halle, 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 hallelujah. Halle, 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 hallelujah. Halle, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm not sure if this has ever happened to you in, in your experience of reading the scriptures. But have you ever had the desire to actually speak to one of the people that you're reading about? What would Moses say to you? What would Abraham say to you? What would Mary say to you if you could talk to them? So let's imagine for just a moment, right now, if it were possible, to have the shepherd in the parable Jesus tells speak to us. What would he say? I just couldn't let one remain lost. I had to find that sheep that had wandered away. But what if that wanderer were a struggling family member or a parishioner who has distanced themselves from the faith? What about someone suffering from depression or divorce or anyone who feels outcast or unloved because of the color of their skin or their sexual orientation or anything in their journey forward through life. We should want to find them, embrace them, let them know that they are unconditionally loved, always a part of this human family, our community in God. Our Heavenly Father doesn't allow us to remain lost. He's always looking for us. We are God's word in action in this world. Are we seeking for those who are feeling lost? If not, why not? And the woman with the coin, what would she tell you today if she could speak to you? I know. I know it's only one coin. I, I know that, I, I know it, but, but 
this coin means as much to me as all the other nine coins that I have. Well, what would you say to a struggling parent who has lost everything and is, and is working on their soul? Would you say, who, why would you go after the lost coin? No. And what about someone who has lost a job and, and they're searching for community? Would you say, why go after the lost coin? Well, if I had just given up and didn't do anything about it, well, that would have been okay. But what, what attitude does that show? What caring does that show? If I just do nothing, it doesn't help anybody out, doesn't help me out. Oh. I don't give up that easily on people and who are struggling, and I, I, I refuse to. And I'm going to Well, as soon as I found that coin, I rejoiced. I rejoiced, and I brought my community with me. And my community is rejoicing as well. And because they found the coin, this one coin gets to be reunited with my other coins. And my community gets to be reunited as well. So I look, and they look forward to things that are going on for them and the rest of the world and for their future. And the prodigal son, what would he say after being welcomed home? I just felt so trapped. I felt completely trapped, but when I was able to get my share of my father's inheritance early, gosh, it was, it was complete freedom. That rush of adrenaline, I could do whatever I wanted. I could travel to far distant countries. I was free, I could eat delicious food, party day and night, join conga lines, come on. I just, the path ahead looked so bright, and the world was at my feet. And then it wasn't. I had nothing. Could, could I ever go back home? Would my father ever forgive me? And what if I hadn't run away? Would I have learned anything? Would I have just kept acting in the same way? I just know I have a completely new perspective. And I've been humbled. If I thought I was in control, I'm absolutely not. God's in control. And in me asking for forgiveness, even when I felt like I deserved it the least, that's freedom. That's the path forward. And my favorite character in all of the scripture, <laughs> the resentful older brother, or as I like to call it, the Father Matt Pennington story. <laughs> what would he say? I've always done everything right. Maybe I overreacted, but I was angry, frustrated. I've always been the rule follower. I've always done everything my father asked of me. And what did I get for it? If I'd run off and squandered half of my father's wealth and then scampered back home, would he have given a party for me? Not likely. Can anybody relate to how I'm feeling? Is anybody listening to me? Three parables in one gospel and each one with the same consistent message. Never stop searching. We're all searching for something. We may be searching for healing. Maybe we're searching to be free from addiction. Maybe we're searching that things can be better at home with our family or work. We all want something. And the message of the parables is never give up. Never stop searching. And once you've found whatever it is you're searching for, hold it tight. 
and take it with you into the future because we can never go back. No matter how bewitching or seductive that idea may be, God is always moving us forward. So find your sheep or your coin or the child that you've lost. Never give up. Hold tight. And once you've found it, go forward. Never backward. Because forward is where you're going to find God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We pray on this feast day celebration of Nativity of Our Lady that we might look to Mary's example and to all those who have answered God's call to service, that we might say yes whenever possible and with more charitable hearts find ways to better the lives of others. We pray to the Lord. We offer our prayers for the people throughout the United Kingdom as they mourn a beloved sovereign servant and peacemaker that looking back on the profound legacy that was her life that might not just console them in their grief but also allow them to reflect the many opportunities for change she has made possible for these things we pray to the lord for greater understanding and tolerance of diversity throughout the world that we might be forward-looking, forward-thinking, and forward-acting people who reach out to others and welcome them as friends. We pray to the Lord. Hear For the protection of all those impacted by the wildfires in our state, but that we might also look beyond this long period of drought and devastation into the sure knowledge that rain does come and replenish the earth and that we too might rest in the knowledge of our faith and be always at peace. We pray to the Lord. Hear Lord God, with so much anxiety and uncertainty about the future, we pray that when we are afraid or given to despair, we might not run backwards to where we feel safe, but that we might have the courage to be more fearless and trust more in you, that we might run ahead or even into the darkness, knowing we will find you there with arms outstretched. We pray to the Lord. For all married people, especially those celebrating anniversaries. In a special way today, for the wedding anniversary of Richard and Rachel Maharas, may they and all married couples be blessed with good health, joy, laughter, and abundance. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all those who've died in a special way today on the anniversary of September 11th for all who perished during that time. 
May they rest in peace. We pray to the Lord. For the sick, the suffering, and those who care for them, we say their names aloud at this time. Through the great and healing power of the Holy Spirit, may all those who are ill be brought to the fullness of health and well-being. We pray to the Lord. For the joyful homecoming of Marilyn Gilday, Mary Luisa Alvarado, Larry Catalina, and for all those who've died, May they rest in peace. We pray to the Lord. Hear our Lord God, we recognize the temptation to look backward. But being a people of faith, we know that you call each and every one of us to look forward and to work with your great and powerful spirit in creating a world that is peaceful, abundant, safe, and holy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, we uh, take up a collection for the ministries of Nativity of Our Lady. And as always, we are very grateful for whatever you can give. Understanding my entire will. Give me only your love and your grace. That's enough for me.
Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the humanity of your only begotten Son come, O Lord, to our aid. And may he, who at his birth from the Blessed Virgin, did not diminish, but consecrated her integrity by taking from us, the, by taking from us now our wicked deeds, making our oblation acceptable to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, to praise your mighty deeds in the exaltation of all the saints, and especially as we celebrate the memory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to proclaim your kindness as we echo her thankful hymn of praise. For truly, even to earth's ends, you have done great things and extended your abundant mercy from age to age. When you looked on the lowliness of your handmaid, you gave us through her, the author of our salvation, your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores you and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exaltation and praise we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time that he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of this death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring us to the fullness of love, together with Francis, our Pope, Danny, our Bishop, and all the clergy and faithful. Remember also our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and everyone who's died near mercy. Welcome them all into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed Apostles, Josephat, and all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, 
with him and in him. O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. May the peace of the Lord be with all of you. And with your spirit. Thank you. Let us share with one another a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy, mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy, mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And sinners come, lay your hearts upon this hallowed ground. As you are draw close to the love that knows, every cross you bear, every secret shame and silent prayer, hungry for the bread. Sacrifice. All are welcomed here, where love is broken for the broken, empty for the empty, and given for the world. In the light and in the darkness, in the singing and the silence. Love surrenders all given for the world.
stains have been made white Oh, lift your heart and praise Rejoice in Him who saves By the sacrifice When love is broken for the broken Empty for the empty Given for the world. Saints and sinners rise. Let the sound of heaven come to life. Over all the earth, a song of love we heard. sin. Let the day of mercy now begin. As you have believed, give what you receive. Live this sacrifice. Where love is broken for the broken, empty for the Given for the world. Given for the world. Worthy of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you
May your church exalt, O Lord, for you have renewed her with these sacred mysteries as she rejoices in the nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary, which was the hope and the daybreak of salvation for all the world through Christ our Lord. So I'd like, to, um, I'd like to begin my announcements by saying a big thank you to everyone who made our celebration possible today. Um, you can imagine there are a million different hands involved in all this. So big thank you to everyone who contributed to our celebration today. The, the bad news, everybody, is that that money that you see laying on the ground is, is actually play money. I saw some of you reaching for it, but um, it's, uh, it's not real. However, the, the parade that you saw, the debauchery, that's exactly what it looks like every Saturday night at Father Jim's house. So absolutely join in the parade. <laughs> Um, this year, um, we normally, at the end of the Jubilee celebration, we have a barbecue. Um, the barbecuers really wanted to take the year off, but I think in light of our construction and everything that's going on, it probably was a good idea that we didn't have a barbecue this year. We are very excited, everyone, that we are finally seeing um, the completion of our Raising the Star project. If you're new to Nativity of Our Lady or a guest here, we um, about four years ago, we initiated a capital campaign in which we were going to... Um, to improve our parish campus in a variety of different ways. We redid our parking lot completely. We replaced our sewer line. We installed nighttime lighting. And now we're about to build an atrium. We're gonna refront the, uh, the, the church, the front of the church, and we're gonna build a star tower um, that really is gonna communicate this is how you enter into the church and also that we are in fact a church. So um, we're, we're getting going with all that. They're installing sprinklers right now and it's, uh, it's a very exciting time for us as we're moving forward. If, um, if you are new to the parish and you didn't get a chance to participate in Raising the Star, know that we would very much welcome your donations as we go into this time of, uh, of construction. You know, it's, it's interesting. There are, there are basically three sacraments that the church considers their initiatory sacraments. We actually call them that, the sacraments of initiation. Baptism, Eucharist, and Confirmation. Now, it could be that at some point in your life, maybe for whatever reason, you were not confirmed, or maybe you were baptized as a child, but you never received your Eucharist, or you never received confirmation, or maybe all three, maybe you've never been baptized and not received the rest of the sacraments of initiation. The process through which we do that in the, the Catholic Church is called the Rite of Christian Initiation for Adults, or we call it the RCIA. It's an amazing process, and I think most cradled Catholics would say they wish they had gone through something like this. It's, it's extraordinary. So they're just about to get started. In fact, um, it's just going to happen in about two weeks. And in that two-week period, we'll begin on Thursday evenings, and from, from late September all the way through November, it's just inquiry. You're just coming to, to ask questions, to learn about our history, our tradition, our, our, our ritual, and to see whether or not God is calling you to join us in this great this great journey that we make every single day. It's, a, it's an amazing experience. So we'd love to welcome you if you are missing any one of those sacraments of initiation. And if you need a little bit more information before you wanna come on Thursday night, give me a call or send me an email or, or Deacon Tom. We're happy, to, we're happy to help you with all of that. Speaking of Deacon Tom, um, he has a special announcement that he is gonna make after the closing song. So you don't wanna leave everybody because Tom has got something very, very important and essential that he wants to tell you. And although we do not have a barbecue to give you today, some of the ladies here decided that we couldn't send you away empty-handed. So they have prepared home-baked chocolate chip cookies, and they have those for you as, you as you exit the Jubilee tent. I don't think you'll ever get one of those at the mission. But you definitely <laughs> get one. A big thank you to all of you for... Uh, for allowing us to have this pavilion. I said a little bit more about it a couple of weeks ago. Um, we installed this, um, really it was my original intention two years ago to just have the pavilion for um, Advent and Christmas of that year. But the minute we put it up, 
I just felt like it was fantastic and I wanted to keep it. And it's been through your generosity that we've been able to meet here for almost two years. Two years already. Some of you just gave money for the pavilion. Some of you in just your generosity and your Sunday donations have made it possible for us to meet here, to baptize children here. We've celebrated adult baptisms here. We've celebrated the Eucharist. We've had weddings in this pavilion. This has really been holy ground for us. It has been an amazing, amazing experience out here. This is going to be our last Sunday here today, but I just want you to know how grateful I have been for us to be able to gather here and to feel safe in this amazing, amazing holy ground that we've had for the last two years. So let's stand and conclude our prayer. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Our celebration has ended. Let us go forth to love and serve the Lord and one another. Thanks be to God. Great is your faithfulness, O oh God. You wrestle with the sinner's restless heart. You lead us by still waters into mercy. And nothing can keep us apart. God of Jacob, you use the weak to lead the strong.